What up, everybody? Welcome back to the Squadcast. Um, we've talked about remakes. We've talked about arcade classics. We've talked about open world Ninja Turtles. <laughs> That's probably not going to happen. And now... But should. <laughs> but should. Um, to... Oh, God. Why do you fit that in every time? What? Better. Death Stranding's a good game, okay? It's a good <laughs> game. Um, now we're going to talk about Bioshock 4, another game that hopefully is still going to be. <laughs> right, Malik? I hope. <laughs> I, want, I want this game so bad. And I mean, there... We know that the game is in development. We just mm -hmm. don't know where it's at in development. And yeah, right. recently we got a job, job posting for a senior writing uh, to develop primary missions uh, with possible secondary content. Um, and with some of you know the text and the specific wording within that job posting, people were able to deduce that there is going to be open world elements uh, to Bioshock 4. Now, the big thing is, right, and we kind of wanted to talk about the the new standard of games when we go into mm. this topic because mm -hmm. when you talk about open world elements that is such a broader uh kind of adjective than it has been uh, in previous years you know because there's like things like outriders where you've got open world but it's these little sections you know locked right. uh behind these screens and then there's you know fully open world no loading screens but with something like Bioshock 4, you couldn't go back to Rapture and mm. you can't go back. I can't remember the name of the last city that they were in, but you can't go back to something like that because the way that you set up the stories around the the architecture of because I don't know if you guys have played Bioshock, but Rapture oh. as as a, a setting for a game tells its whole story. Mm. Yeah. So being able to continue to tell that story in an open world and do it so heavily in the same way that they did with Rapture, yeah. I'm a little bit skeptical. But what do you guys think? What are your guys' thoughts on this? It's tough to say. Uh, I'm skeptical, but for a totally different reason, mm -hmm. uh, mostly because Ken Levine's just not involved. And to me, he is Bioshock. I mean, there's a reason why Bioshock 1 and Infinite were so... Uh, so great, in my opinion, anyways. I think no, those are some of like, the best games of, you know, at this point, two generations ago. But no, I do see why you'd be skeptical as well. Uh, Bio or uh, like Raptor, for instance, is a character in itself. And you go in and you explore, and you don't really get the full story until you start picking up all the, uh, the audio diaries and, and stuff like that. That's when you start really fleshing out what happened here. Why is this? city yeah. under underwater to begin with and what happened here so having a more open world may have the player go through in their own way and not fully experience the storytelling elements the way that the developers intended yeah which is going to be strange but again i don't know what bioshock 4 is going to be is it going to be similar to Bioshock 1, 2, and Infinite? Or is it going to be its own new thing just under a Bioshock name? I mean, to be honest, like they could they could come out with a concept and not even really need those storytelling elements anymore with like visual and, um, and, and the setting incorporating into the story. They could mm -hmm. just take a totally different direction. So I, I don't know. I don't know if we should be worried. I, uh, unfortunately, I don't really come from like a background where I played the Bioshock games, so I don't know too much about them. So when you say like, oh, the next one's going to be open world, that just sounds exciting to me just because sure. I like open world games. Mm -hmm. But from what I've seen, that's just something that a lot of people who are a fan of the franchise are really down for. And that the more linear kind of tight spaces that, that you get from Bioshock is what makes the game so good. So I, I'm not sure really what opinion to have here besides just at face value as someone who likes video games and i hear that there is an open world game coming out i look forward to it because i like open world games that aren't death stranding oh my god stop it oh. stop it it's a great game okay <laughs> <laughs> leave kojima alone okay um but alone. but Mal uh, malik and caboose you guys bring up interesting ideas right like the state of the industry what is the standard right um yeah. and 
Caboose, you mentioned like an open world gets you excited. You enjoy open yeah. world games, right? And I feel like now we're seeing so many games or franchises that we grew up on. That's the immediate like it has to be open world. Yeah. Um, yeah. And what does open world really mean? Because now we're seeing all these different iterations of open world. They're kind of still a lot of them are still sandbox to a certain extent. They're not like completely open um, and mm-hmm. how you could explore these worlds are kind of it's more guided right um when i think of bioshock i've only played the first one in like very i was really scared playing the game. <laughs> so like i was having trouble getting through it but i think a part of why it was kind of eerie why it was scary is because you're taken on a path where the de- developers wanted to take you um when it is open world i think it's definitely harder to do that with um you lose that element uh the shock value the pop-ups you can only expect that it cuts to scenes where then now that if you're going around a corner you know probably something's not going to happen there like it's really hard to keep it fresh um so i think that would be really worrisome and i kind of understand where fans of the franchise are going at with this one um, because that's that's a real concern like and do we really need every game to be open world right mm-hmm. like i i don't right. think so right it doesn't yes <laughs> did you say and, yes i mean yeah, yeah especially <gasps> one game um oh my god continue yeah. Uh, but but no but you know what caboose you're not the only one that thinks yes right like you got to think of what consumers are paying now for a game right they're yep. paying 80 bucks for a game right that means yeah. that you kind of want your money's worth of a game right like and, you just don't want to have you know 25 hours and that's it you want to continue to be able to go back to this world and you want to get updates and unfortunately i feel like that has become kind of the standard but i think it does limit us in you know good storytelling it limits limits us in having great experiences yep uh, there's there's an expectation that comes out of open world games, right? There needs to be a, a lived in world that feels like it's breathing, you know, and it, like the world needs to feel like its own character, which I guess something like Bioshock and maybe could seem like it worked the best for. Yeah, um, sure. But um, yeah, that's that is like a part of the expectation when you when you have an open world game, you need to know, like, wherever you're going, there is something to do. There is something to see that's brand new. Yeah. Um, And that could be difficult. You look at something like cyberpunk and to be honest, everything looks the same. Mm -hmm. Wherever I go in that open world, it looks the exact same. And that, you know, the the characters or the the world and the civilians and stuff like that doesn't feel lived in. Everything feels like computer generated, if that makes sense. You know, the civilians don't act like civilians. The police don't act like police. It's just, it's all weird. Like. you know, it just doesn't work. And so with that, you're like ripped from the immersion of it being an open world. And so that is like a part of the expectation that comes from games like that. Uh, and that's why, you know, there still should be times where games are just linear, you know, mm. like let, let games continue to to give us those linear experiences. Look at something like Uncharted yeah. uh, and Uncharted 4 being like this incredible, like one of the best games ever made. And it's a completely linear game. Like it's there's no open world aspect to it whatsoever. Um, so some games like, yes, there is an opportunity there to, to create an open world, to create something that's living and breathing. But it shouldn't be the benchmark. I feel yeah. like that sets a scary precedent for, and, uh, for games. And this is something uh, that I mentioned before. Sorry, I just wanted to add yeah. to that, um, because when we were talking about uh, Caboose's, you know, open world TMNT, like that sounds cool. But again, like I brought up over the break to these guys, like there's not a lot that's happening in the Ninja Turtle world to just kind of happen and like you come across, right? Like Mm. there's only a certain amount of times you could really see Shredder's men, right? Uh, Right. Is this world really living and breathing? Not really, like it's usually just the main villains that are really interesting, right? So that's why for me, I said, I I don't know if I'm up for an open world TMNT, although it sounds cool. I just don't know what that world will be, right? Um, Mm. So yeah, like that, I, I completely understand what you're saying there, Caboose. Yeah. And going back to Caboose's point, I just want to—I I want to imagine that there's a middle ground that can be obtained here. I mean, you go back to even the first Bioshock; there are RPG elements in that game. 
It's yeah. not, but no one, no one you ask would be like, oh, Bioshock's an RPG. Yeah. Um, so I, I think right. that you can even have open world elements in a Bioshock game without really using that as on the box, being like, this is the first open world Bioshock, you know? Right. You can have like larger hubs and stuff like that, you know, more uh, layered uh, areas that players can explore while not fully committing to being like an open world game. I think that could be unique. Yeah. Yeah. And Camille, so you made a point too about like your experience with Bioshock and I'm not sure how far you got into the story, but there is actually a like se- uh, there there is somebody pushing you along in, yes. in the within the story. So that is one of those things about Bioshock is you're not just linearly going through you're not going through a linear story. There is mm. actually ingrained story elements of somebody who is pushing you along and influ- influencing you. Yeah. Steve, I want to bring up for you, how would you feel if they did, because there was talk about uh, AI and crowd uh, control AI and and that kind of development. How would you feel if they did Bioshock 4 during the height of Rapture and explored the prisons? Because Persephone's correction facility has two levels underneath the caverns, but we only saw one room of the second level. I love it. (laughs) <laughs> because i just love rapture as, as a setting uh i think it, i think it's awesome and even when you go back to infinite and it's um buried at c dlc and you kind of get that first look at by uh, rapture like in its heyday i love yeah. that 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 was so cool although i do feel like without ken levine i do worry about them going back to rapture that's like mm-hmm. my big hesitation i would almost rather see this team just approach something brand new get away from rapture get away from columbia just do something brand new and just kind of forget about the past kind of thing, you know, just let it all go. Um, But if they did really want to sell this as being, we're in the Bioshock universe and we got to go back to Rapture, sure, let's go back in time and and see it in its heyday, like full scale. Mm -hmm. That'd be cool. I feel for, like, as you guys are talking, uh, obviously, Steve, you're a fan of the franchise. Malik, you love it as well. Um, I feel like the world is like so my issues with tmnt i feel like it's the the world itself there isn't enough world building in that uh, to make mm-hmm. it stand on its own as an open world right because i feel like open world games the world itself the environment has to be its own character right like that is the main character right um and i think that's why the arkham games are so great uh because of that right it, the world really comes alive it gives you the feeling of being like grim and like this kind of hopeless city that's like just ridden with like really bad crime like over and over again right but Bioshock kind of has that as well so now I'm kind of caught on this fence like well I could kind of see more open world with Bioshock um, but then if that does sacrifice the story and the impact that the story has then maybe not Unless it's yeah. not like, um, you know, a canon Bioshock in a sense where it's kind of like this other thing that exists. Sure. Yeah. If they don't, if here's my here's my biggest issue, why I would rather them go back to Rapture, uh, even though Ken Levine's not here, is because I would rather not have them make a Bioshock game that mm. is kind of Bioshock and just mm. open world. Like it's in the Bioshock world, but you don't get any of the real Bioshock storytelling. Like you yeah. said, Camille, that's the big thing. Yeah. The world needs to speak on its own and yeah. be a character. Like you said, it can't just be, we made an open world Bioshock. Like it, it needs to have that story. Yes. Yeah. Because I'm not going to go chalk for an open world. I really don't care about that. I really care about the complex stories that they told within yeah. one and infinite. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like the, they the studio really has a decision to make whether it is going if they are going with open world. I feel like that's kind of the safer bet for them, um, especially because they don't have like that figure kind of leading the charge and knowing where the story is supposed to go. Maybe having an open world that's outside of that 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 lore and that story, um, but kind of continues paying homage to what's come before it would be the best thing for their student for them to do especially because they they lost that figurehead um yeah just sorry just to add on i think it's really like a damned if you do damned if you don't thing. i think coming out without ken levine it's a brand new studio to begin with and just coming out with a bioshock game if it's rapture again they're gonna be like okay this is bioshock 2 all over again it's not gonna be that great and if they do do if they don't do rapture it's gonna be well what what's the what's the point of this 
this game to begin with. They have a lot to prove, and I would not want to be part of that team. To it, it, It's stressful, but I, I hope they pull it off. I really do. Yeah, I really cross. do. And, I mean, before before we move on to you, Camille, you had mentioned, like, not every game needs to be an open world. But do you think that that push for making games open world is kind of pushing developers to expand on the worlds that they're creating because now they can't just make these open playing fields they have to kind of provide some story to it no i i don't think it's it's not pushing it's pushing them to expand on these worlds but expanding how i don't think they're really looking into that unfortunately they're probably getting the push from the people that make decisions that are like open world games are selling we could sell dlcs within these worlds um and consumers will buy them we could sell different skin packs and everything like that because it has the rpg elements that just makes us more money and these studio like the these developers may be dealt with okay well that's not really where we saw the franchise going but because we have to do it let's just throw some things in there and then you get like something like cyberpunk right like i don't think cyberpunk was meant to be an open world off the bat yeah um yeah, i don't know either i don't think they knew <laughs> that's true that that <laughs> they, are, they are a special <laughs> special situation there but but i feel like it, it you would think it would push them to expand on their world and make it more or have more depth. Um, But unfortunately, the reality is sometimes these decisions come from people that are higher up than the developers, and that wasn't necessarily the plan from the start. So then they just try to put like, okay, some RPG elements, some side quests, like just make it like the bare minimum definition of an open world and let's just go with that. Um, Exactly. And unfortunately, that hurts the franchise. Any franchise you don't need, that deals when with you that. do an open world game, it doesn't have to be like this massive open yes. world. You know, yeah. sometimes if you just give me like a decently sized area to explore that has like plenty to see, you know, plenty of collectibles to find, and you know, just it, it can feel lived in enough to where it's like, like for instance, the perfect example of this is Batman Arkham Asylum, Batman Arkham City, and Batman Arkham Knight are all open world games. Yes, right? and they all work in the different sizes that like the different settings that they take place in. Arkham Asylum as an open world game works perfectly in the setting that you are in Arkham Asylum. You're in these tight corridors. Arkham City works because it gives you a little bit more of that oh, like freedom, but the streets are still tight. There's still these alleyways, these tight corners. And then Arkham Knight is supposed to be this massive open world where you're in Gotham City. And that works especially because you have the Batmobile and mm-hmm. you know, yeah. a lot of upgrades in terms of like just the traversal that you get with Batman in general. So Yes, it is fun when you have a massive sandbox to play in, but also sometimes you have a game like Cyberpunk where that massive sandbox is filled with nothing. And I would much rather maybe just one of the districts be the open world for Cyberpunk so that it's always something cool to see and there's always something new to find and it's not as overwhelming. And, you know, it just uh, it feels a little more lived in that way. There's less work in terms of the NPCs or the way that everyone's supposed to react to something and a little more work that could be put into the story and the characters and the development of those characters. And to be honest, I I think a similar case could be made between Rapture and Columbia. I, I I don't know. Like I could, I could see there being a, a case made that you could say Columbia is more open world than Rapture is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Even I, though it's I, not I, traditionally I, open world. I mean, they do have like, like you said at the very top of the week, like these more segmented areas that you do have freedom to explore, but they're still propelling you forward from area to area. But it is open world in the fact that you're not just walking down these linear hallways. Yeah. And I don't think they, I doesn't make sense to me to do an open world game set in Rapture unless it's during the heyday when right. it's an occupying living breathing space because that yeah. is what made Colum- that's what gave Columbia its charm um, because it was alive yeah mm-hmm. yeah I think there is something to say when you don't have an up open world that it leaves a lot to the imagination of fans like you True. get a lot of 
lore, a lot of, you know, um, fan art that kind of dedicates to what if scenarios, you know, of this world. And for me, that's why I used to love, like when Breath of the Wild came about, like I wasn't on board with that to start off with. I was like, no, I don't want a, a open world Zelda game because I, I loved Ocarina of Time. And I love the fact that it is sandbox and it takes you on this journey. You know exactly kind of what you have to do. You have these puzzles like with Breath of the Wild, although I love the the Zelda lore and the world so much, I have books on it. I, I don't want to see that in a video game. Of course, Nintendo just kicked it out of the park. But, um, you know, <laughs> there, there are hesitations now, like even things that I used to like fantasize about with the world of Legend of Zelda and be like, oh, this would be so cool if this happens. Now my ideas of that change because of Breath of the Wild and I have a yeah. better understanding right. of like what this world is supposed to be. Of course, it's a little different for Zelda because there's how many different timelines and you don't know what's canon and what's well, what's the main timeline and what's not. But, you know, there is something to be said that, you know, when you have a sandbox or more of a sandbox game, there's a lot left to the imagination for fans to kind of create lore around. And yeah. I think that should be appreciated and we shouldn't always rush to just these open world uh, ideas. So we're going to have to see what happens with Bioshock for if I, I'm still on, if it happens, I'm still on that because you never know now. With the studios. That's true. true. Everything's up in the air. Exactly. Exactly. But